Stop Motion Studio, um, the first place to start, hopefully, does everybody have the app downloaded on a device, either a Chromebook or a tablet? I'll be um, demonstrating from an iPad. So one of my logins there is my iPad, which I have logged into Zoom, and I'm going to share my screen from that iPad so you can kind of watch me go through it in a little bit. Um, but I do want to show you this website, which is the Creator Studio website. Um, can everybody see that? Did I go to that window? Okay. So this site is worth exploring because of the lesson plans. So if you're interested in implementing an, a lesson plan with your students in a certain age group and a certain content area, and you'd like some real structured um, ideas for implementing those lesson plans, this is a great place to start. So for instance, the states of matter, and I've seen a lot of stop motion videos around the states of matter. So if you click on that, it gives you an example of what it looks like. And this was a claymation one, provides the objective, um, the topic, and then it gives you th like a three to four step activity. And there's also a rubric, rubric, which is really helpful. A lot of times when we give kids these projects, <laughs> we don't know how to assess them. So they've created a nice project, a nice rubric. Um, and here we can click on this and we can watch the video. We'll see what kind of a delay we have. So that's a really high quality example of how we can use stop motion to illustrate the concept. So that's that um, Creator Studio website. And there are, there are a few other lessons, not a ton, but a great place to get started. And sometimes when I was doing this, I needed just, an, just a lesson so I could see what it looked like. And maybe what I taught was different, but I could kind of see how it might come together. So that's the Creator Studio site. There's also a tutorial site, and I put that on the slide so that if we leave this and you're using the app and you forget how to do something, they've got some nice step-by-step -step tutorials about how to use each of these things. Um, and you can go back, and there are quite a few on YouTube as well, and I watched many of them, and oddly enough, Quite of the few of the tutorials I watched on YouTube when I just put in stop motion studio were made by kids, um, which I thought was a real credit to how easy this app is to use if the kids are teaching us how to use it. So that's that one. Um, if you wanted to upgrade, these are your options. Um, it's any, anywhere from $4.99 to $9.99. Um, depending on the device that you're using. When you upgrade, you get um, the opportunity to add backgrounds and transitions and some more animations and typing text in. Um, and you'll see once we get into the app how limited it is if you want to do anything beyond just taking pictures and stringing them together in stop motion. So again, you kind of have to weigh it out. How often that, am I going to use this? And how many projects do I see my students doing? Can we get by with the free one? Or would it be worth it to upgrade to the paid version? But it's this is one of those few apps that works across multiple platforms. It's not just an iPad or just a Google app. You can use it on lots of different things. Um, Chromebooks especially, I know a lot of schools have Chromebooks now, and so using it on Chromebooks is really helpful. I'm going to go back into present mode, or maybe I'm not. So this is a video that I'm just going to show part of it because it's kind of long, but I think it does a nice job of providing um, some, maybe some ideas and some brainstorming about how stop motion can be used with students. And this is on our website, uh, PBS Learning Media in a collection called the KET Media Arts Toolkit. And there's a whole resource about stop motion, stop motion animation with lesson plans. Um, I'll just go to it right now real quick so you can see it. Um, this is what it looks like. It has the video that I'm going to show. And then over here, it has some background reading, an activity, and some further information. 
as well as some discussion questions about the video. So this is a whole resource um, made by the PBS station in Kentucky for getting your students started with stop motion. So we'll watch just a little bit. This movie's eight minutes, so I'm only gonna show um, three or four minutes of it, but I think it's cool because you'll see students doing these projects and you'll hear teachers talking about the projects. I'm going to go back to this because I have it downloaded to the slide. Let me know how the sound is. Is it okay? Whoops. Um, whenever we come up with our STLP projects, I like to um, talk to the kids. What ideas do you have? Because I don't want it to be about me. I don't want me, I'll, I'll offer ideas, but I want them to try to have input. And if they have an idea, most of the time their ideas are better than mine anyway. So I threw it out at the beginning of the year and we had some students who were new to STLP, new to the junior high. And one of them said, well, you know, we did this project last year and I really like it. And I think we could do some more with it this year. Um, so they said, let's try the stop motion animation. And we had probably five ideas and we threw them out to everybody in STLP and the students said, let's try the stop motion. I think it would be good. And then from there, we just kind of decided, what do we want to do with stop motion? How are we going to, you know, what project is that? Is it, what are we going to do with that? That's the technical part. Now, what else? I know a couple of teachers who are doing it right now with their students. Um, one of the teachers actually just kind of threw that out as an option for her kids to do along with some other options. This is your project. Here are some different ways that you can use it. So some of them took um, the stop motion and decided to do stop motion for their projects. And then another teacher, that was what he, he gave them their topic. And from that, they had to build upon it, but they had to use stop motion to do it. Diana Wolf, who is our queen of all things technology, she knows that I love technology. So anything she hears about something, she'll say, have you tried this? And so I'll do it and I'll just turn it into whatever our project that we're doing. That's how we're going to do it for that time. Um, Mr. Van Meter, my seventh period teacher, he got us introduced to it because he taught, was talking to us about stop motion and like we'd watch YouTube videos about it and like how to do it. And then my partner, she downloaded it on her phone and that's how it started. What's, what's mean you do when it's funny because the teachers will say, well, how do you know all this to teach these kids? I don't, I don't know any of this. It's like we learn it at the same time. And as a matter of fact, the, the kids actually teach me more about the technology than anything. They're not afraid to use it. I come from a time when, you know, you're afraid you're gonna tear something up. You know, I really thought that this last project was gonna be a stretch, taking child labor from around the world and making it into an animation. But, you know, I thought, gosh, I don't know how to do this. And, uh, some of the kids said, well, look, I found this animation that was similar to this. I believe we could do this or we could do that. And so you just tweak it and make it work. But they learn a lot doing that. I learn a lot doing that. That keeps me fresh as a teacher. My project is about child labor. And then what it's talking about is that we're trying to stop child labor, like from kids having to work instead of going to school and stuff, because it's, we think it's not right for them to have to work and other kids get to go to school because the parents can't afford to take care of them. This workshop was on child labor is actually called Stolen Lives. And uh, it's about children all over the world that have to work instead of go to school and become educated adults. And so once we learned what we learned in our workshop, then they had to do their own research. And these are some of the basics I wanted. Which country has most child laborers? Um, what particular labor is it that most children have to do? Anything that they could get that they could give me statistics. I want true numbers. I want real information. So once they came up with the information, then I gave them a storyboard. And from the storyboard, they had to put in their information, what they knew that they wanted to animate. And then from there, they started the animation process and then the presentation process. Well, we used um, Play-Doh and Legos to just, um, we use the Play-Doh to make like a road and like the um, field. And then the Legos, we use them as like the mean, per, like mean people. And um, uh, uh, there's like other Legos that I, I brought, I used, we use them as like the workers. And they like the little hats is like for every, like the workers and all that. 
So I think that they're learning lots of problem solving skills. Some kids want to do a project by themselves. Some kids want to do group work. So they're learning cooperative learning. They're learning to work together on something specific that they may be doing in their future. You know what I mean? So, you know, who knows what professions there'll be out there when these kids grow up. Stop right there. So what I liked about that was, you know, this was a heavy project. A lot of the projects I've done with kids, I, I had them much more open-ended and it was a little bit more playful, but I love the idea that we could go deep. We could describe something intense like child labor using stop motion. And it's a really creative way to get kids invested in the content and to share and research and share what they learned about a heavier topic. So that's why I thought that was a good example. Oops. Okay. I'll go to the next slide. So I have some other examples, and these are um, examples that I've got from a teacher in Livingston, Montana. Um, and her name was Becky, and she's no longer teaching. She's an administrator now. But she posed a challenge to her high school science class to demonstrate the difference between fusion and fission using stop motion. And it was just kind of an open-ended thing. Um, they were using phones. Uh, because they didn't have devices in the classroom and so they were allowing kids to use phones at that time and I was I got to be in the room while they were doing it and it was exciting because they discovered right away that this is all about taking photos and it's taking the same photo over and over again with slight changes to each photo which means we, we need a really steady shot and simply holding a phone was not getting the the steady shot that they were looking for so they made up these little makeshift tripods. Um, this one, they've, they've taped the phone to this little crate here. This one, they've got a, a chair on a table and then the phone propped up on the chair and then they've got a whiteboard underneath the camera so they can create things there. And then this one, the girls went home and got some cardboard and created a little table that they could put the camera and, and so put the camera right here. The phone was right here and they little made sure the eye of the camera was there. And then all of their work was below them. So the innovation that came just from trying to make this work um, was really exciting. Becky made this assignment a week long. She assigned it on Friday and, or Monday and it was due on Friday. Um, and it was a group project. So they worked in small groups. And she'll be the first to tell you that some of them were good and some of them weren't. <laughs> but this is the one um, that everyone likes the most. It's super funny. Fission. A film brought to you by Fuego Choose Production. <laughs> Okay, let's pretend we have a neutron here, right here, from space. Okay, sure. So it's coming in, it's flying real hot, just a, a lone neutron. Bada boom, bada bing. Look at that. What is this down here? Oh, it's uranium. Uranium-235, perfectly stable, unlike my X's. Here comes the space neutron. Bada boom. Whoa, what is this? It's uranium. Wait, but it's 236. That's not stable. Oh, one too many bean burritos. That's how I'm feeling too, man. There it goes. Wait, but hold on. Krypton 91, what? Brarium 142, three neutrons. Okay, it explodes. Everything goes everywhere. Wait, but here's another neutron. Space neutron? Okay, sure. Here we go. Wait, but what's that? Uranium 235, it's a cycle. Fine. <laughs> so that was by far one of the best ones. Um, oops, let me get out of that there. Um, and then this one was kind of the same where they, a lot of them used a combination of whiteboards and Play-Doh and um, just those kind of animated effects to plan this. Some of them storyboarded it out um, and some of them didn't. Um, some of them just did it as they could, as they went. I'm gonna give, you're looking for the slides again. Let me get that for you. One minute here. There we go. The next set of examples are from a kindergarten classroom. And these are, we have friends from Three Forks on the, on the call today. Um, these are ones I did in Three Forks a couple of years ago when I was helping out Jordan Cox in her classroom. And she was kind enough to let me come in every week and play with her kids and do tech stuff with her kiddos. And so the, when I start using a tech tool with kids, I start with a, just an introductory lesson that's not tied to content. Um, it's really meant to just let the kids 
play and explore and get to know the tool. And so I try to pick something that's fun and easy and it's okay if they don't do very well. And so the one we did was this one of unwrapping and eating uh, Reese's Pieces. Who doesn't love doing something like that? So this is a really quick one where it's just the cycle of eating the Reese's Pieces. And it's really fast, so I'll show you again. And that was just a bunch of pictures where we take a picture of first and then we unwrap it, take a picture, and then we unwrap it more, take a picture, take a bite, take another bite, and then they could kind of see that process. So then we moved on to, now we're gonna do it with spelling words. And we had them work in partners and gave them sticky notes. And they got to choose a word from the story they read that they made a stop motion video using sticky notes. And so this is one of those. Again, really fast. So it's C-A-T and then a cat at the end. So that was like, we could go really big with fission and fusion, or we could go down to just eating Reese's Pieces and uh, a cat. Does anybody have any questions at this point? No? All right, that's fine. Um, so some of the ideas that are out there for um, projects that you can do, and Tammy shared a couple from her space, um, telling a story is a great one, and describing changes over time, so uh, states of matter, as I said before, uh, illustrating a key concept like vision or fusion, demonstrating the steps in a process, so kids have to do a demonstration speech or a how-to um, piece of writing, the stop motion is a good way to illustrate that, or making predictions about something. I grabbed this picture from um, a Google search that was a free image, but you can kind of see the setup here. This is a pretty legit setup as far as with the light and the tripod holding the iPad and then using the cars and the toys and the Play-Doh and things like that. When I had students do this in my fourth and fifth class, it was a really nice excuse for them to get to play with Legos. And they really enjoyed getting to play it, put thing, put their little pieces together and have their little figures and, and act those out. And it's um, those older kids who might be too cool to play. This gives them permission to do that for a little bit, which is kind of nice. Um, what I also caution kids about is the storyline can be really big until they sit down to make something and realize they're gonna have the more, the bigger and more complex the story is, the more pictures they're gonna have to take. And so encouraging them to try and tell a story with a five to six pictures to start and then growing that over time is a really good tip um, because it can get away from you very quickly, especially if we want kiddos to, um, they always want us like make the next Lego movie as soon as they get started. So <laughs> giving them some structure as they build up to the Lego movie is really important. So, oh, Tracy just joined us. Hi, Tracy. Um, so if we are looking at Stop Motion Studio, I always like to start with this is our icon that we're looking for. The blue is the free one. The pink is the paid one, pink paid. So um, you have them tap on the, the blue icon. And then this is what we're gonna see, the home screen. And it's very much the same for this app as it is for a lot of other apps. We start with a plus sign. Um, we, we always make new things using a plus sign. So that's kind of a universal symbol that we see in apps. Um, and then this is just a screenshot. So it's also gonna have all the other videos that are shared on the device. What I love about this app is we don't need to log in. <laughs> we, we can all just share an iPad and we'll make something and it'll live on that one iPad. It's not gonna be in a cloud or anything like this. Tracy says no DPA, LOL, that's right. We don't need special parent permission to use this because it's just gonna live here on this device. Um, whatever you create lives on your camera roll. You can put it on your camera roll, and then you can put it wherever you want. So those videos I showed you from kindergarten, we put those on Seesaw, and then they were, a mom and dad could see them from home. Um, Becky had her kids paste, um, give her a YouTube link for her in high school, and then she put those on a classroom website. So you have a lot of options for where you can share things when they're done. 
So this is what sub all of the commands are. Once you touch that plus sign, this is a screenshot of what everything does. You can see this on your own by touching the, the question mark right here. And then all of these little highlighters will come up so that you can see what everything does. You'll see very quickly as you go through the settings and you go through the voiceovers and the images, if it has a lock on it, that means that it, that's a paid feature and you can't use that one. And again, unless you're making something really complex and you do work up to the Lego movie, um, you'll probably be able to do what you need to do with just the free version. I'm going to exit out of the slides and do a demo on my iPad. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share from here. Okay. So on my iPad here, I've got the stop motion studio is down um, in the corner here. So I'm going to open that up. And I've got a couple of things shared there, but not too many. And I can, are you seeing? Yeah, I think I accidentally covered you guys. Let me move you over here. Now I'm going to come here to my plus sign and start a new movie. And this is where you're going to get a little bit of a tutorial. Um, you can watch it or not um, and go past it. Now I'm using an iPad that actually has a case um, that I can have it sit on these, this green case. And so this allows me to let the iPad sit on its own. And so I, it makes it so I don't have to, I don't have as shaky of a shot. And I also took um, a, just a file folder and I put a zoom background that I printed on the inside of the file folder. So this is um, a Mr. Rogers neighborhood <laughs> zoom background that I printed and I can give you the link for how to find the PBS kids zoom backgrounds if you want. And if you set that up kind of right there so that you've got your background. And this is fun for kids to kind of play around. They could draw their own background or they could print their own. Um, they can kind of decide how they want it to be. I'm gonna move it over. And then I also have my Mr. Rogers pop toy. So that's what we're gonna demonstrate on today. And we'll put him in. And I'm just gonna do a real simple one where he's, he's in the back of the area. Um, oh, thanks, Tracy. She's sharing where you can find the Zoom backgrounds. I'm going to put him right here. And I might, if I were being really cool, I might find like some fabric or something to put down on the bottom here so it looked like carpet that he was standing on. So I'm just going to do to take, I'm going to take my first picture and I press the red button and it makes the camera. And then you can see there on the film strip at the very bottom, every picture you've taken pops up down there. Now I'm just going to move him a little bit, take another picture. I'll keep moving him a little bit, take another picture, move him a little bit, and then I'll have him go out of the screen and take a picture. So now if I want to show or watch this, I just touch the play button and it's going to just continuously run through my little stop motion. And the only way to get it to stop is to press the pause button. So, and then you can take it through with your finger. You can drag it along the film strip. Um, if you select one and I tapped it like that, I have my tool buttons come up. So if we wanted to cut um, one of those screens, or we wanted to delete it, or we wanted to play, do some audio over top of them, that's where we could do that here. So we could, choose audio and choose, oh, that's a paid feature, so never mind. So we can't do audio per individual one. Well, Jessica had a question, let me bring that up. Is this available on the Chromebook? Yep, it is. Um, you have to go to the Google Play Store and you have to download it um, using Google Play and then you would find it in the apps 
section on the Chromebook and it looks exactly like this. Um, and so that's actually a, a much more steady way to get a good picture because the Chromebook has to sit. So that works really well. Um, oh, thanks Tracy, my assistant there. So if I wanted to get rid of one of those, I could just press delete um, and I could get rid of that last one if I wanted to. Once I am finished, I can go to that little carrot arrow at the top and it'll take me back to the home screen and it automatically saves my video here on the home screen. I can, once I tap that, I can change the title of it. Done. And then it stays right there. If I want this to go somewhere, I've decided I want to put this on Seesaw or I want to upload it to Google Drive. I choose select. I touch the one I want to select. And then that blue bar across the top that's the box with the arrow above it. That's how we share things. And so now you have your choice. You can export it. You can make it an animated GIF or GIF, depending on who you are. I say GIF, some people say GIF. You can put it in your images. Um, a flip book or a project. And so I usually go with export movie and then you have to tell it where you want it to go. You, and so I would put it to my Seesaw. We'll put it to Seesaw and see how that goes. This might not be a good demonstration because I'm not connected to Seesaw. I don't know who Mrs. B's kinders are. Somebody's class I was working in, probably. We'll try to my Google Drive. And then just select my user and then upload it, and then it'll live in my Google Drive. And then I can put it on a Google site or wherever I might want to put things. Um, I'll go back to my movie. Another thing you noticed in some of our examples was the kids did the voiceover. And so you can touch the microphone and give permission and then press, you have to be really fast, press record. Beep, 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 beep. Done. So <laughs> you have to do it really fast and then we can play it. It didn't record my sound very well. So it was too fast. Um, and then you'll notice if we go to plus sign, we can, the adding clips and title and credits, those are all paid features. Um, we can't do any of those things. Settings is where you can play around with your, um, your light and your aspect ratio, um, how fast you want it to. So if I wanted to slow it down and do it to like, two frames per second or a half a frame per second or if I want it to go really really fast they we can play around with that with the timing um here's we could play with the fade um although the kids on the tutorial on youtube I watched recommended not doing the fade um and then you can also play with your aspect ratio or the size and what your screen looks like this is background you'll see a lot of these are locked so your only option is this binocular view or no background at all. So one of the advantages to having the paid version would be these fun backgrounds that could be inserted. And then this is again, filters. Um, you can Instagram filter some of them. However, your only choice is black and white in the free version, but that's okay. Um, and then 4K, if you have a need to make this broadcast quality, if you want it to be on TV, who knows? I would bring it down to SD depending on um, how you're going to share it. I think probably with Seesaw, if you're uploading things, it can take a long time. And so the lowest quality, the better. And then playback if you want it to stop at the end or if you want it to continually go, you can kind of decide or include live playback or add a pause at the end of playback. So you can kind of play with all of those settings. And that's what is there. So that's kind of a, a basic demo of the app. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point? I'm gonna stop broadcasting, stop sharing my screen on that one. 
I'll go back to my slides. Cool. Okay, so now we're at the part of the program where I'm gonna encourage you, if you haven't done it already, um, to play in the sandbox, um, the tech sandbox. So get your um, tablet or device out and your challenge is to make a video that you could share with the group. Um, and we'll, we'll figure out how to share it in a minute. Or you could just tell us what you did. So I'm going to set the timer and give you a pro opportunity to just play around with it. And if you have little toys or things in your office and you want to play with it that way, you can. And then we'll bring everybody back and talk about it. Well, I'm going to share my screen again and show a couple of these from the folder. And we'll let people claim them and talk about it. Tammy, you must have added some from your class. Is that right? Awesome. So I'm guessing yours are the, the snowball one. Is that yours? Oh, you're muted. I, I can't hear you. <laughs> going on and on. Hey, the, the, the snowball one, we edited again, we, we created a green screen and then we added it into my media class into Adobe Premiere Elements, but the Lego one was completely done, but it is stop motion and you can see some little gloves. It would. Oh no, are you okay? Here, let me help you. You have a heavy head. No throwing snowballs or you may lose your head. And, and an, an hour, hour after, after school. <laughs> That's awesome. So you said you made it in stop motion and then you put it in another program and added the green screen. Is that what you did? Um, we, yeah, well, they filmed it on a green screen. So we just used green um, butcher paper. And mm -hmm. then we added it to, um, it was Adobe Premiere Elements and we added audio to it and then the backgrounds of what they wanted. But I liked your idea of creating the file folder thing. So that's what I've been busy trying to create. So the kids could have the backgrounds just to start with. Yeah. My kids also used a, a box, a cardboard box one year too, and like kind of diorama style, put construction paper on the inside and created a little dollhouse scene that way too. So, so that one's cool. And you said the lay, oh, whose is the lifesaver one? Um, that's mine. I was trying to look at what I had around the house to use as a <laughs> perfect. But, um, I could definitely tell where you'd want like more of a stable tablet because my tablet's uh, operating system is a desktop, so I couldn't um, put it on mine with my phone. Yeah, just between holding it and then shadows and a little yep. bit of thing, but yeah, that's cool though. It's a good it's a good GIF GIF or GIF. A couple of those. Let's see. Let's try this one. Oh, that turned out cute, <laughs> Shanna. <laughs> he had fun doing that. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, there he is. <laughs> Let's see, we'll go up to this one. Be kind. Oh, I'll try it again. Be kind. Oh, that was cool. Who's was that? That was mine from Three Forks. So, Yay. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> yeah, kind of goofy. See how quickly we can make things? <laughs> right. Let's try this one. Hello there, all of you. This is Dominic Ventures reporting live for PNN. Uh, breaking news. So, this Lego dragon destroyed this guy, Bob, here. It, it destroyed his whole entire village. And so, we this one might not be stop are, motion. I'm gonna <laughs> Great video though. So that we can perhaps. He does all the voices. Exactly he does all kinds of these Lego ones. So it so might not be, I'm sorry. What exactly That's okay. did this beast do? Like, what was its strategy? Well, it just swooped in, burned down the whole village and left. Okay, thank you, Bob. And you what have it to like? Well, it was green. It was green, anything else? Nope, it was just green. So you didn't see much of it. It was just a flash of green, breathing fire, and it was gone. 
Okay, thank you, Bob. Which yeah, direction did it come from? That comes in here, but I don't know. Aim for. <laughs> that was cute. Sorry. In the Lego. No, that was a great example, though, of how to incorporate Legos in video projects. Let's see what this one is. I think that was Jackie's. Yeah. She did that before she left. So, yep, just zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. And she has it at, maybe she has two of them. <laughs> Fun. Let's see. Crystal, you had a couple of them, it looks like. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Let's see. Just other one. <laughs> so what were some of the, the challenges you encountered that you thought, oh, I'd have to figure that out before I did it with kids? I would definitely say get like get your device stable. So I have like, oh my gosh, it was, it was so crazy. Me holding the hand, holding my phone in my hand while the kid was over here, like going crazy. So mm -hmm. definitely I would like to have a space like you showed earlier, um, with that, that Lego bottom, the piece there, and then the lighting. I think that that would be really awesome. So mm -hmm. definitely have a space for it. Mm -hmm. Tracy put in the chat, doing this with partners, um, where one partner is the iPad holder and the other one is, you know, touching the button or moving things on the scene. So I think that that's a really good way to, or like those pictures I showed you before where you have some kind of a stable tripod kind of thing. She said, oh one yeah, kid, that's yeah. a great idea. I like the, Tracy said one, one kid does this and that for communication collaboration. That's perfect. Thank you guys. <laughs> The teamwork but then I also I have some tripods um, that I bought on Amazon for less than twenty dollars and I've loaned those out before and it's amazing just getting an iPad or a tablet on that tripod and setting that up um, or like I said this has you know a stand on it so I can kind of just set this up and let it sit on its own and that can work um, and then I also had this thing in my classroom called a just stand and it was like an arm and it, it was meant for the iPad to, to sit on it so that you could maybe use it as a document camera. But I never taught with document cameras. So that thing was like all over the classroom where kids were constantly using it to hold the iPad so they could do things underneath of it and take their pictures. Oh, Tracy just put that, um, the pad document camera.com. So the just stand, yep. So um, that's another fun way. And those we used in so many ways, not just stop motion. Um, having kids take pictures for Seesaw, it's really easy to take blurry pictures and having them take it over to that just stand and then just take their picture makes a much less blurry picture. So that can work too. What else did you notice about this project or what would you have to think about if you did this with kiddos? Or Tammy, what, what, what pro tips would you give the group about when you've done this with class, with your class? Um, I think the hardest part is just fi figuring out the tripod idea. Mm -hmm. um, so I, do you know those like wooden domino um, to hold your dominoes up for you? They're little mm -hmm. wooden pieces and they have like different slats. You can buy them at Walmart, get like four in a box. Those mm -hmm. held them up pretty good. Um, but I haven't figured out any other way for that. I think it's just giving kids time and, and each kid likes different things and then having stuff for them to like, you know, like, like the little characters or Lego characters or, you know, just having that kind of stuff for them to do. Mm -hmm. They just go for it. Now, I, I have never really had kids storyboard before. Um, I can see the value in it, in having them, you know, have their little grid and draw a picture of what would happen in each scene and then maybe briefly describe as a planning tool. Um, I was the teacher that was like, yeah, go make a stop motion video. Let me know how it goes. And, um, but, and sometimes there were kids that did that on their own because they liked the planning aspect of it. Um, but if you liked the idea of storyboarding, whatever the scene was, um, that can help those kids that need those kind of scaffolds and structures in place as far as um, making a video that is 
got some content to it. <laughs> um, all right, any other questions or aha moments you had about the app? Well, Jessica's asking, how much time do you allot to develop? Um, and you only see the elementary kids for 40 minutes. So when I did those um, stop motion videos in Jordan's class, I was only in there for about an hour a week. Um, and so I always planned it as a, I do, we do, you do kind of thing. Or, in, or sometimes I had Jordan maybe introduce the concept before I came in too. So sometimes I might have the classroom teacher um, just explain what a stop motion video was to kind of set up the fact that I was coming in to visit and show them how, um, and then even show them some examples before I came in. Um, and then I spent usually about, I don't know, five or 10 minutes demonstrating um, with the iPad connected to a projector or something so they could watch me going through it. Um, and then I think we gave them, you know, 20 to 30 minutes to create a very simple project, you know, with like that stuff with the post-it notes and things like that. So we did do those post-it note videos in a single, I think, one hour time period. So I think it can be done. It just kind of depends on the kids and what their routines are. And I would really like spend a little bit of time, maybe the first week, you would maybe watch videos and talk about what stop motion is and maybe you would model making one in front of them and then the next time you saw them then maybe you'd let turn them loose and let them try it tracy what about you do you have any tips about how long it takes oh she can't unmute because her husband is on zoom too okay you say after showing lots of examples is important. Um, <laughs> trying to type fast. <laughs> Storyboard discussion developing about an hour. All right. Tammy, what do you notice when you do these with kids? How long do they need to do it? Depends on the project, probably. Uh, exactly. Um, I think that if you chose your project for the time that you have all allotted, would be the best way, meaning like you had your little elementary ones, like, you know, the cat, those ones, or um, my my things tend to take a little bit longer. And I think storyboarding would have helped like the snowball story because um, we had to keep going back and doing additional scenes. Um, I don't, I don't know it. We worked on them for about a week. Okay. And I have them every day for 40 minutes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where Becky's, the high school in Livingston with the fission infusion, that was a Monday to Friday class and her, their class periods are about 50 minutes and they were just working on it that whole week. So I think it could be done, again, starting really small with, you know, like we're just gonna see what we can make by taking five pictures, a minimum of five pictures and just get the idea of what it is. Any other questions? Oh, okay. Well, Tracy's got some examples for a project that she's done. She's got a great blog with a lot of good examples. Um, you can click on that, see if it comes up. Here's her blog. And then, yeah, these are good with the words. And they do need a ton of pictures. <laughs> Imagine how many pictures that was. So that's cute. There's a bunch of them on there. So yeah, there's a couple good examples. Um, cool. All right. We'll cruise right along to the next piece. We're going to do the prize time and give away the Google Home. So I've got my wheel of names here. Can you see that? All right, I'm gonna click the spinner. See who gets to take the Google Home home. It's like Bonnie. Is Bonnie still here? Yes, there you are. All right, do you have one of these? No? Okay, cool. I'm gonna put this in the mail with you tomorrow. And hopefully you'll get, hopefully I got your address on there. So we've got that. And then again, everybody's gonna get a little special something in the mail. 
Oops, that was the wrong slide deck. Um, and then the next thing I want to show you is we've got um, this activity. If you got excited about making these projects with your class and then you wanted to participate in a national or uh, activity, um, KQED, which is the PBS station in San Francisco, is doing these youth media challenges. And they're inviting for you to make this a project that you do with your students and then submit your work to them to be featured on their website and possibly on air and sharing across the different um, PBS stations. So the link is here. Um, and there's a couple of different categories and it talks to all of the different things of having kids create things. So there's an engineering for good which is students have to find a problem in their community and design a solution to it. There's the If Schools Could Dance, um, and it's a, a, a video celebrating um, dance in the classroom. Um, an audio story, so having students create podcasts, um, or yeah, perspectives, and then another one, podcasting. And then a political cartooning category, having kids do political cartooning. So that was one where I thought stop motion would be a really cool function for that one too. So these are running um, starting February and running until June. And it's just the challenge is, is to give your kids some of these semi open ended projects that they could um, present or that they could create things for. Sometimes it's much more motivating for kids to have an intended audience for the stuff that they create and to submit it at um, a national level. And so that's what that, um, what that is all about. So we would invite you to um, get your kids set up for the Youth Media Challenge. And for us, because this is something that another PBS station is doing, if you do have your kids submit things, let me know. Um, and so we can make a big deal out of it uh, here on our end too. And we can share it on our social media pages and things like that. And then we do have more Media Labs coming up. It's gonna be every Monday until May 17th. This is the last one I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> Lucky for you, you get to learn from a whole bunch of other cool people. Um, next week, we're gonna do iMovie for the iPad. Um, and that's with the awesome Ann Brecker from Billings. And then Tracy, who's on here right now, she's gonna do a couple. She'll do Do, do Ink Green Screen, which is another iPad app. And then the next week she'll talk about coding using Scratch Junior and code.org. Then Ann will come back and do iMovie for the computer, for the, for the MacBook. And then we have Sarah Abdal from Livingston, who's gonna talk about Adobe Spark. And we'll be back again, and she's gonna do a sketch noting session using Procreate. Um, and then Tracy's gonna do Apple Clips, which is another cool one for um, have, making animations and making videos on your tablets. And then Keynote is another one for making animations and cool presentations. And the last one, Christy Brammer and Amy Westrop are gonna talk about chatter picks and pick edu, and that one's specifically for the pre-K two classroom. Although those are apps that older kids love as well, um, but they're going to have a lot of examples from the primary classroom at that session. So if you registered for this one, you're already registered for all those others. And the link that you use to get into this um, session, you'll be able to use to get into all of those as well. Um, but if you want to check them out, you can go to our website, montanapbsmedialab.org, montanapbs.org slash medialab. Does anybody have any questions about any of those sessions? No? Okay. And let's see. So again, I hope that you're following Montana PBS. Um, we have, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I have a closed Facebook group just for teachers. And so if you go to Facebook and search for MT PBS teachers, you can ask to join and I'll add you. And that's where we share any of the events that we have happening as well as any digital resources that um, we can and try to try not to fill your, your feed with anything too useless, but hopefully there's good stuff there as well. Um, and then we're going to have an ed camp in April. And this is for teachers of all students, pre-K through 12, to join us, our administrators, librarians, professional development coordinators for early 
care, early care providers, anybody who wants to join us, it's free. It's online. It's on Saturday, April 24th, and you can register um, at this link right here. Uh, we do ed camp a little bit differently than our in-person ed camp. We build the session board a couple of days before based on a survey that we send out to everybody who's registered. And then when you pop on, we'll have, because it's going to be pre-K through 12, we're going to try to have a strand for each of those grade levels so that you get to talk with peers in your area. Um, it'll be three hours. We'll do credit for both early childhood providers as well as OPI credits. And then we've got lots of fun prizes and things that we'll hand out at the end. So um, hope you'll be able to join us for that.